Welcome everyone. Now, today we're going to look at the classification of hydrocarbons. Now, hydrocarbons is a diverse group of organic compounds. They are so diverse that they form many different shapes and structures. And so it makes sense. We classify them and place them under different groups. And so today we're going to do just that by just looking at the structural features of them and group them. So let's get right into it. Now, hydrocarbons can place into two large groups. Those that are open chain and those that are closed chain. The ones that are open chained, they are called aliphatic. And the ones that fall under the closed chain, those are called cyclic. For the open chain hydrocarbons, they can be of two groups. They can either be saturated or unsaturated. And just to quickly remind you that the saturated, it means that the carbon atoms, they have the maximum possible number of hydrogen. While the unsaturated ones, they do not have the maximum possible hydrogen. And next thing you can do is to differentiate between these two types of hydrocarbons is that one, saturated, they are single bond and unsaturated are either double bond or triple bond. And so an example of saturated will be the alkane homologous series. For the unsaturated, examples for those will be the alkene and the alkyne homologous series. Now for the cyclic, cyclic could be homocyclic or it could be heterocyclic. And as the name suggests, if you look at it carefully, homo means same. So there, therefore means that the atoms within the ring will be the same. In fact, the atoms or elements that will be in the ring will be carbon. While for heterocyclic, that means in the ring, it will not only be carbon. So it will be carbon with other atoms or elements. I'm not going to demonstrate this later, okay? So just bear with me. Now, for homocyclic, could be on the two groups. So homocyclic could be the aromatic or the alicyclic. All right, and so let's now jump into distinguishing between aliphatic and the cyclic. So generally, you want to make the different um, note the differences between the major groups. And so the first difference you want to look at is that simply put, is that aliphatic, they are straight chains, and the straight chain could either be branch as well, all right? So the straight chain or branch. And the cyclic is definitely ring, ring structures. All ring structures will be cyclic. That means th there is no open end. It is a continuous base or continuous um, ring structure. Now, for aliphatic, they can either be saturated or unsaturated. And for cyclic, they are generally homocyclic or heterocyclic. Okay, so this is a summary of what we said earlier. Now, jump to specific examples now, right? For aliphatic or open chain, remember, they can be branch or they can be straight chain, okay? And also, they could be saturated or unsaturated. So let's look at these examples now and see which of them fall under these categories. So ethane, for example, you only see single bond. So right off the bat, you know this one is going to be saturated. And it's also a straight chain. For ethane, there is a double bond. And for ethane, there is a triple bond. So it therefore means that these two will be unsaturated. And they are straight chain as well. 
However, isopentine, now look at it carefully, you'll realize now that there is a side chain and there is a triple bond. So this one will fall into two categories right here, right? So yes, it will be unsaturated because of the triple bond and it's branched because of the side chain. Now, for the cyclic examples, again, they must be in ring structures. They can either be homocyclic or they can be heterocyclic. And so let's look at the first one, which is aromatic in its sense, because the homocyclic ones, they can be either aromatic or they could be alicyclic. So a general thing that you can look at to know aromatic compounds is that they have the benzene structure. In fact, the next thing you need to look out for is that the carbon atoms, they have alternating double bonds. And remember, every point where the lines meet or we have a vertex, there should be a carbon. So this would be a six carbon compound. And because of the alternating double bonds, it is classified as aromatic. Alicyclic, on the other hand, do not have the alternating carbons. So, for example, this one here, you notice there is a double bond, but the others do not have. So it's not alternating. So it looks similar to the aromatic, but it's not alternating. So it's alicyclic. All right, again, these are just carbon in rings. Now, for the heterocyclic, if you notice something here, is that, again, remember where the lines meet, you have carbon atoms. And so you have carbon. So if you count them, it will be one carbon here, two, three, four, and five. And then the, for the sixth bond, it will be a nitrogen. So, but, so the presence of this nitrogen makes this structure heterocyclic. So there's a difference in the ring in terms of the atoms. It's not purely carbon. All right? And so this will come to the end of it. And as always, I truly appreciate you watching these lessons. And I want to just to tell you this, that for every difference in life, there is a unique purpose. So everything serves a purpose. And that's why we have variety. That's why we have variation. So this time, until I want to stay blessed, keep safe, until we meet again. Peace out.